Hi, hi, hello, and welcome back, everybody, to Wolf Tales. Last time we found out that, hmm, uh, Fudiu was almost killed at one point. Anyways, <laughs> check out the last episode to find out more. I'm just going to leave it at that. But, uh, anyways, exhausted from talking so long, Minardi takes a well-deserved break and leans on the back of the couch. Between making dinner, talking without pause, and re recalling memories best left forgotten, Mirati has quickly depleted what energy she had left. I figured Mirati had her reasons for not wanting to tell me about her situation, but it looks like once she got started, she just couldn't stop. Who knows how long she's been holding all of that in, wanting to get it off her chest. I may not know much about half-wolves, but I get the feeling from her story that they aren't exactly the touchy-feely type. Hmm... What's all this racket about, Fudu, you ask, sleepily. Mm. Awakened by Mirari's story, Fudu raises her head and begins to rub her eyes sleepily. Hmm? Oh, morning, princess, says Fudu. <laughs> Good evening, Fudu, says Mirari. Hmm. Evening, she asks. That's right, I'm not the first one you should be greeting. Huh? She says. Fudu raises an eyebrow as Mirari giggles. Rather than wait for Fudiyu to notice me, I place my hand on her shoulder. Are you awake now, Fudiyu? I ask her. What? <laughs> Fudiyu tries to jump back in surprise. However, since she is still sitting on my lap, her actions serve only to bring the two of us even closer. What? Wh why? Why? Why is the human? <laughs> Fudiyu's face turns bright red in an instant, and she realizes where she is and what she's doing. Sitting on my lap, looking at up at my face so close that we could be kissing words continue to fail her oh, oh I'm, I'm gonna fuck with her don't you remember who do you we were snuggling on the couch right up until the moment where you fell asleep snuggling as food you N no that's i would never food you says you must have moved my body while i was sleeping I did no such thing, I say. In fact, I tried to separate from you, but you wouldn't let me at all. Liar, says Fudiu. There's no way I would do something so shameless. This is definitely all you're doing, says Fudiu. Actually, Mirardi says, Fuckboy King was quite careful not to wake you, Mirardi says. They haven't moved at all since the two of you started waiting for dinner together. D dinner Fudiu asks. At the mention of the magical word, Fudu begins to s begins to sniff the air. Oh, oh, right, of course, that's what it is. I was just hungry and tired, and your lap was warm, so I naturally fell asleep on it. Silly of me, Fudu says. Of course, that's what happened. Why else would I be napping in a place like this? If that weren't the case, I'd never be caught sleeping on your smelly lap. You don't need to get so defensive, Fudu, I say. I'm not getting defensive, Fudiyu says. I just don't want you to misunderstand, that's all. Fudiyu finally removes herself from my lap and runs over to the kitchen, lured in by the smell of food. Even after she reaches the food, Fudiyu steals a few glances in my direction then quickly averts her gaze when I catch her. I guess that's my cue, says Mirari. I'll bring dinner over in a moment. Just sit tight, Effie King. Oh. That was an accidental habit. I just <laughs> popped out there. Uh, having filled our bellies, Mirari, F Fudu, and I sit down on the couch once again as we ponder what to do with ourselves. After napping earlier in the day, Fudu and I are still full of energy. Mirari, on the other hand, seems like she, she'll she fall asleep at any moment and is hanging on by force of will. <clears throat> ah. Really, I'm fine. I'll go to bed when you do, says Mirari. That would sound more convincing without the yawn at the start. Go to bed, Mirari, I say. You aren't getting... You aren't going to miss anything. But I don't... Mm, feel tired, says Mirari. You're a terrible liar, I tell her. <sighs> fine, stay up for all I care. I was just going to watch some old VHS tapes anyways, I say. VHS... What is that? asked Mirati. I've never heard of it before. Yeah, most people under 20 haven't. <laughs> oh, freaking hell, that's so true. It's a way f for humans to watch old movies and TV shows whenever they want, I say. It's a bit dated now, but they still work as long as you have the right equipment. Movies and 
TV? Asked me, Rarty. Foodie, you do you understand what Fuckboy King is talking about? She asked. Mm, I think I've heard of TV, Foodie you says. That's the magic box with the moving pictures, isn't it? <laughs> You're not wrong, but I say, do you girls seriously not know what a television is? How could you be familiar with canned food and running water, but not television? I ask. Hmm. Even if you ask that, me it already says. Well, what does television do that's so special, asks food you. Running water and canned food provide us with sustenance. Why do we need television, asks food you. Uh, mm, I say, you actually do have a point there. Television has a couple of uses, but it's mostly for entertainment, I say. I pull out a box filled with VHS tapes and place it in front of the two wolf girls. Inside the box are dozens of tapes still in their original cases, cover art and all. Are these the VHS? That's right, I say. Pick one that you like the look of and we'll see what's on it, I say. Okay, says Miyardi excitedly. Who do you and Miyardi start looking through the box of old tapes? After searching for a few seconds, they pull out a single tape. Let's see what you've got there, I say. A documentary about animals of the grassland, I ask? Yes, says Miyardi. I am quite curious to see how those in other climates thrive. I suppose you would be if you lived in the snow your entire life, I say. What about you, Fudu? Hmm. I'm not sure I want to watch it, but the cover of this did catch my eye. That's okay. Show me what you've... I say, <laughs> I almost gag on my own saliva as I gaze upon the tape in Fudu's hands. On the cover is a young blonde woman with a large chest dressed in nothing but a revealing swimsuit. Unlike the Grasslands documentary, which is still in its original plastic sleeve, this video has been viewed so many times that the tape is beginning to wear out. Oh? Asked Mirardi. What manner of VHS is that? Are we going to view that next? Asked Mirardi. No, I mean, uh, I say, this one would bore the two of you to death. It's not the kind of thing you'd be interested in, I say. Really? Asked Mirardi. I did get the feeling that I wouldn't like it, says Furyu. So it's a boring one after all, huh? Oh, oh yes, quite boring, I say. I'll just put it back in the box way at the bottom so we don't wind up picking it out again, I say. Huh? Mirardi says. I breathe a sigh of relief as the two wolf girls allow my slip to pass without a fight. Looks like I'll need to be more careful with that stuff as long as these two are here. I've been able to do things at my own pace until now, but I can't be so careless when guests are over. Heard on. <laughs> this man's got some sexy tapes. <laughs> Rather than dwell on food to use discovery, I hurriedly cram Mirardi's choice into the VHS player. After skipping through the ads, anti-piracy warnings, and other outdated product placements, I start the movie where the film crew are just beginning to set up. The first few minutes of the film explain how the crew are looking for specific animals during today's outing, and how they plan to observe each one. Whether they succeed or not is yet to be seen. All they promise is not to hurt the animals and to view from afar. Oh, look at that, says Mirardi excitedly. The water is flowing in a perfectly straight line without any chunks of ice floating in it at all, she says. And the grass, it's everywhere. There isn't a single patch of snow to be seen. You're right, princess, says Fudiu. This is truly fascinating. With ready access to unfrozen water, do the animals living in those parts drink their fill and bathe whenever they feel the urge? asks Fudiu. I imagine they must says Mirardi. Why else wouldn't they? Oh, look, Furyu, says Mirardi. A rabbit is drinking from the river. I see it, princess, says Furyu. But where is all its fur gone? It will never survive the winter like that. You're the last person who should be asking that, I say. I smile wryly as the two girls excitedly point towards the television. Even Furyu, who generally attempts to feign disinterest in such thing, is clearly enjoying herself. So far, movie night is a resounding success. Huh? Asked Fudi, where did all the animals go? Why are they only showing humans now? Ah, it looks like they're taking a break and discussing how they're going to track down the next animal, I say. Boring, says Fudi. I agree, actually, I say. I don't. I find this fascinating, says Mirai. The humans are all huddling together to hold a strategy meeting, just like we would, she says. I think the people you're watching might 
claim that you have that backwards. Oh, look, a human city, says Mirari. Yuck, says Furyu. They're even further away from the grasslands now. Ah, I say, they're going back to the studio to talk with some expert. My, that building is enormous, says Mirari. Are most human buildings as big as that? Oh, and the number of people. I've never seen so many human beings before now, says Mirari. How nice it must be to live there, she says. With one eye still glued to the television, Mirari starts pulling on my trousers. The city is convenient, but it's not that great to actually live there, I say to her. Fuckboy King, you grew up in a city like that, Mirari asks. Yeah, kinda, I say. Not quite as busy as that one, though. What was it like, Mirari asks. Tell me, tell me. Ah, says Furyu. Hey, hey, princess, look, they've gone back to the grassy area now, Furyu says. There are cute animals and everything. Furyu tries unsuccessfully to grab Mirari's attention. And now that the video has moved away from the human civilizations, Mirari's focus is solely on yours truly. Uh, fine, says Furyu. Furyu, Mirari asks. In a huff, Furyu mimics my actions from earlier and clum- clumsily mashes the remote controller until she succeeds in turning off the television. Furyu, what's wrong, Mirari asks. Nothing. Hm. Furyu pouts as Mirari finally glances towards her. Sensing what's going on, I decide to put Furyu out of her misery. I suppose it's getting rather late, I say. We can continue watching the video some other time. For now, let's all go to bed, I say. Aw, but I want to talk more about human civilization, says Mirari. Oh, oh, good idea, human. Or rather, that's exactly what I was thinking, she says. Come here, princess, let's go to sleep. Mm, okay then, if you exist, insist, says Mirari. Good night, fuckboy king, she says. Good night, Mirari, good night, Furuyu. I say, good, good night, says Furuyu. Without further complaint, Mirari curls up on the couch alongside Furuyu. Furuyu joins her and snuggles up close, as if making up for their discontinence a mo- moment ago. Content to leave the duo just like that, I retreat to my bedroom and head to bed myself. Having napped for a while yesterday evening, I wake up earlier than usual this morning. Alright, it's already moved on to the next day, so I think I'm going to call it here for this episode, everybody. As always, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time for more Wolf Tales.